I'm Stephanie, and welcome to your playground, Gulfstream Park. Today I'm in the poker room inside the Finish Line Casino, where I'll be showing you how to play one of the most popular forms of poker, Limit Texas Hold'em. At the start of any Texas Hold'em poker game, the dealer spreads and shuffles a standard 52-card deck. In casinos and card rooms, the dealer does not play. However, in home games, dealer duties are usually shared amongst all of the players at the table. In self-doubt home games, the dealer duties change from the next player in every hand. In a clockwise direction, it's always the person to the immediate left of the dealer to act first. So having the deal duties rotates allows for an even spread of positions at the table so that no one seat has an advantage. And by that I mean that the first person to act in a hand is at the disadvantage because they have no idea what any of the other people may do. Whereas someone who acts later has been able to collect information for those in an earlier position. In games with a dealer, a round disc called the dealer button moves clockwise from player to player to each hand. The button marks which player would be the dealer if the game was self-dealt. Every hand requires two force bets called blinds. Games begin with two players to the left of the dealer who are in early position as I explained putting a predetermined amount of money into the pot before any cards are even dealt. This ensures that there is something to play for on every single hand. Most often, the small blind, who is the player to the immediate left of the dealer, puts up half of the minimum bet. And then the player to his left, who is called the big blind, puts up the full minimum bet. In cash games, this amount is what determines the stakes. For example, when you see a $2, $4 limit hold'em cash game, that means that on every single hand of the game, the blinds will be half of those amounts. So, the small blind will be $1 and the big blind will be $2. The $2 and $4 is what determines the bet sizes, which I'll get to in just one second. So this reinforces what I was referring to earlier with the rotating of positions, as it would be unfair for seats one and two to always post the blinds. In the next hand, the dealer button will now move along to this player. And then this player will now be the small blind, and this player will now be the big blind. In tournaments, the same applies, but the difference is that the amount is increased over time in order to ensure the elimination of players. This is why you may see a breakdown of levels for each tournament. Each player is dealt two cards face down. These are called the hole cards, and you must protect these cards from being seen by any other player, so you need to check them very discreetly. The object of the game is to combine these two cards with five cards which will eventually be laid out in front of the dealer. This is known as a board and it's in order to make the best poker hand at the table. So this hand may consist of two whole cards and three of the board, one whole card and four of the board, or very occasionally, neither of the whole cards and just the board. The first round of betting takes place immediately after the deal with no cards yet on the board. The first player to act is the player to the left of the big blind because these two players were initially forced to act. The first to act has three options, to call, raise, or to fold. To call, the player places a bet that is equal to the big blind. To fold, the player pushes the cards face down towards the middle of the table, which constitutes the muck. This player will no longer be in the hand. So in this case, these players have their forced bets for the small blind and the big blind out with $1 and $2. If this player likes his whole cards and wishes to raise, then he must raise by $2, making it a total bet of $4. If the next player then wants to raise, he can make it $6. All of the following players then have the same three options until all active players have put an equal amount of chips onto the table. Once the first betting round is complete, the dealer then discards the top card of the deck. This is called burning, and is done so to ensure that no one accidentally saw the top card and to help prevent cheating. The dealer then places three cards face up onto the table. This is called the flop. This round and all further betting rounds start with the first player to the dealer's left still in the hand, because we no longer have the forced bets, also known as blinds. They are only pre-flop. In this post-flop betting round, we have one more option. In addition to calling, raising, and folding, players now have the option to check. This is like taking a pass, staying within the hand without betting, and passing on to the next player to make the move. If everyone checks, then that betting round is complete and everyone gets to see a free card. However, 
If one player bets, then all players must either call, raise, or fold. Checking is not possible if a bet has been made by the player before you. After the completion of the second betting round, a further card is burned, and then the dealer adds a next card to the board, and this here is called the turn. Now a third round of betting commences, once again starting with the player to the immediate left of the dealer. For this betting round, the fixed amount doubles and remains at that amount for the next and final round of betting. After the completion of the third betting round, a further card is burned. And then, the fifth and final community card is then added to the board. This is called the river. The fourth and final round of the bets now takes place with the same rules as all the previous rounds. This is where the real excitement happens. This is showdown. When the challenge player must reveal their cards and the winner is determined by who has the best hand. As I explained earlier, players can use two of their whole cards with three community cards or one of their whole cards with four community cards or in a rare occasion, all five community cards which results in a scenario that would usually end up as a chop pot situation. Here, two or more players involved have the same hand, so the split of the pot is even. Otherwise, may the best hand win. An important point to note is that not all hands actually reach showdown, or even the fourth betting round, since folding is an option that is widely used if a player makes a bet and everyone else folds to them, then they scoop up the pot without having to show any of their cards and this is the part that makes it really fun with bluffing.